time ever at Constance, our prom queen is... If you're someone who has never been to prom, buckle up because you're going to absolutely enjoy this video. I never went to prom because I went to a boarding school, a Catholic school, an all-girls secondary school. So prom was a myth for me. But last week, I actually went to prom in my own me-made gown. This prom was organized by New Craft House and it was called the Sewing Prom and essentially everyone who attended wore outfits that they made. So if you're someone who is looking to make your own outfit for prom or you're someone who just enjoys fashion design and you're curious to see how this amazing ball gown came together, make sure to keep on watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and let's get into this project. I can't believe I'm going to prom! Oh my gosh! I know it's prom season and a lot of you guys are looking to, you know, find inspiration for what kind of gown you could make or what kind of gown you could show up for. I went on Pinterest to find some inspiration and there are so many different styles, so many different silhouettes to consider, but I knew I wanted to work with African prints, so that narrowed down my search a little bit. I'm aware of my height as well, I'm 5'2", so I'm not very tall, so I wanted something that had a little bit of volume at the bottom, but I would be able to walk around in, dance in and not feel too weighed down wearing the piece. Another thing I had to consider was how I would use the dress after the event. I wanted something that, you know, I could restyle for future events. So instead of making a one piece gown, I decided to make a corset and a skirt. So this video is going to be split into creating the sewing patterns for the corset, cutting and stitching the corset, and then cutting and stitching the skirt. And I would also share any tips and tricks that helps to bring this piece to life. The first measurement I'm taking down is across my front chest. This is going to be where my front neckline is going to sit. And then I'm going to measure around my bust line, ensuring that I go around the fullest part of my bust and take note of that. And then my waist and around my belly or like my belly button area, because that's going to be the hem of the corset. Then I'm going to decide on how long I want the corset to be. I want it to be far below my waistline and then around where my belly button is and then I'm measuring my nipple to nipple measurement as well as how long I want the skirt to be. A tip for your skirt length is to stand on your tippy toes if you're going to be wearing heels with your skirt so you have that included in the length as well as measuring around the hip just to guide me when I'm making the skirt for this design. Moving on to creating the corset patterns, I have a big piece of paper laid on my table and I've already drawn a horizontal line on the top edge and from that line I'm going to be marking my full corset length downwards like so and then I'm going to square this across because this line I'm drawing is going to become the hemline of my corset. Now I'm going to move to that top line and mark 2.5 inches below that and then mark the vertical distance from my bust to my waist and square those points across. The first line on top is going to help me make my neckline, the second one is my bust and then the third is my waistline and then the fourth is the hemline of the corset. Now that I have these lines marked in place, I'm going to be marking a quarter of my bust measurement along the bust line and then along the waistline i'm going to be marking a quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for my waist start and then i'm going to go to the hemline and mark a quarter of that around belly button area and mark that along the hemline so that guides me to create a shape on the side seam that sits comfortably on my body I highly recommend you work with your measurement or that of your client so you have a fit that is comfortable on your body or on your client. Now that I have my side seam drawn in place, I'm going to mark one inch above that top line that I drew and then draw in a neckline shape that it is high on the center front edge and then it kind of dips down towards the side seam to create like an oval like shape that's the best way to describe this type of neckline it's not straight it's kind of rounded in a way so it rounds off on um, the center front and then it goes down to the side seam 
Next up, I'm marking half of my nipple to nipple measurement along my bust line. And then I'm marking 2.5 inches from that half nipple to nipple measurement sideways. And these, I'm going to draw a vertical line that goes across them. That way I'm going to be dividing this front pattern into panels. The one on the side is a lot more slanted and it goes inwards as you draw it towards the hemline. Along the first vertical line, I'm marking away one inch, which is half inch on both sides. And I'm going to be drawing in the first waist dart that goes in towards the hem. And then it curves out towards the bust point. This way, I am getting rid of any excess that will sit underneath the bust as well as dividing this piece into multiple panels that will be stitched together. To shape the neckline even better, I'm marking away one inch, which is half an inch on one side and half an inch on the other side on the neckline and then draw that back into the bust point. This way you won't have any gaping happening on the neckline. Ensure that you lift the other side of the panel because it's a slanted curve You want both edges of that seam to connect So just measure them both and then lift the one that needs to be made higher I have three panels at this point you can divide you also have even more But I'm going to go to the second division point and take away half an inch along the neckline and then draw that back into the hem so i am shaping that neckline really nicely while i have divided my front pattern piece into three panels now i'm going to trace off the three panels onto separate pattern paper add seam allowance around them and these are what i'm going to be using to cut my fabric the first one that sits in the middle is going to be cut on a fold so the center front line is going to be a folded Part. and then the one on the side I'll cut two pieces for one to go on the left and one to go on the right and then the one on the very edge which is the third panel I'm going to cut two pieces for and one which is on the left and on the right hand side as needed <music> For the back corset patterns, I'm going to be adapting the front plan, keeping certain parts the same but making some necessary changes. The first change I'm going to make is the center back edge is actually two inches inwards away from the edge of the paper. That I'm going to be drawing across as a vertical line like so and I'm just using green pen so you guys can tell which side is the front and which side is the back. I'm now going to be dropping the back neckline by half an inch. That is going to be a scoop that goes downwards towards the center back and back to the side seam. You want to ensure that they connect on the side seam. The next thing I'm doing in here is I'm marking 2.5 inches along the waistline and I'm going to be drawing a vertical line that cuts across like so. And along that line that I just drew, I'm marking away one inch, which is half an inch on both sides. And I'm drawing in the back waist dart. This is going to be my division point for my back corset. So I'm going to trace off two pieces for my back one that sits on the middle one that sits on the side i'm going to add a seam allowance around that and that's what i'm going to use to cut the back of my corset you can do this plan as a separate paper or in a separate piece so you're not confused but i just like to save paper and do my back plan on my front and just trace off the patterns I need from there. That way I keep the information of the front and back on the same plan and I'm saving paper as well. So the first piece is going to sit on the center back area. I'm going to cut two pieces for that. One sits on the left and one sits on the right. And then the side piece is going to sit on the side and I'm going to need to cut two pieces for so. The last piece of pattern I did was a modesty panel. This is optional but I love to do modesty panels because they sit behind the back of your corset and they just cover your skin. Mine is 10 by 11 inches. I made it a little bit wider than my back. So once it's inside of the corset, it covers up it covers me up on the back of the corset piece and this I like to do in the same material. You can do it in a complementary fabric if you want to play around with textures but those are all of the pattern pieces done for the corset and the material I'm going to be using today is this beautiful purple and yellow Ankara that was actually a gift from my mom. This is actually two wrappers I'm about to create 
and used to make the corset and the skirt. I have five yards of the Ankara and five yards of this plain black satin. I'm also going to be using plastic boning, some bias tape and some eyelet and zip for this project. With my fabric scissors, I'm cutting out all of the pieces that I need for the corset as well as the lining pieces for the corset. I'm going to be working on the corset first and later on in this video will work on the skirt so it's easy to follow and it's easy to digest. I always like to write with a chalk what panel is the front and what panel is the back so I'm not confused when it's time to connect everything together. Now we have all of the pieces cut out and ready to be stitched. I'm going to be starting from the main outer shell that I've cut in Ankara and this I'm going to be joining together putting right sides facing each other. I'm just going to pin everything so I connect the front, the back and I have one piece for my Ankara corset ready to be connected to the lining. Sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance, I'm joining all of my panels together. Remember to do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end. This I'm going to press all of the seams open. Pressing your seams open allows the seams to lay down a lot flatter. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the lining panels as well, join everything in place. And I have decided to put my boning tunnels on the lining. I don't want the stitches of the boning to be visible on the outside so I've actually cut and pinned down bias tape along the seam allowance on the inside of my lining. This I'm going to be stitching along the sides to create a tunnel where I'm going to be passing my boning through so be sure that your boning width fits the tunnel that you are creating. If you have a wider boning you want to work with a wider bias and create a wider tunnel. Now that I have all of the bias tape stitched on the wrong side of my lining so they are not visible even when I look inside of my corset I'm going to be getting my boning and just make sure that I round off the edge of my boning and pass that into the tunnel. It is important that you make your boning shorter on top and on on the bottom because when you are stitching the neckline and the hemline you don't want to stitch into the boning itself if you have metal boning you would actually break a lot of your needles so i've gone ahead to pass all of the boning into the tunnels on my lining piece i actually ironed this a little bit to just relax all of the boning that was being curly and acting a bit funny once i had that in place i'm going to be putting right sides together of my lining and my main outer piece that I've made with Ankara and I'm going to be sewing along the neckline, along one side of the center back and along the hemline. This way I'm finishing off all of the edges that I need but I need to leave one side open so I can turn this inside out. With a small scissors, I'm going to trim down the corners and cut tiny incisions along the seam allowance on the neckline especially. And then I'm going to turn this piece inside out and reveal the right side of my garment. I'm going to do this nice and slowly. And then I'm going to go to the end that I've left open to allow me to turn things inside out. And for that end, I'm going to fold it in and stitch it close. Now I'm going to be using a very narrow or very slim edge stitch so i'm stitching as close as possible to the edge this way i'm closing off that center back edge finishing it beautifully and nicely this is what the corset is looking like i didn't add any bust cups or padding because my plan is to wear a strapless bra underneath this piece but if you have a bust pad or foam you can add that to your lining piece for support what I'm doing at this point is I am marking the points where I want my eyelets to be. I wanted a, a total of five eyelets and I'm using the smaller ones because I just want the lacing to be a lot tighter on the body. This I have marked with a chalk and then I'm going to use my eyelet puncher to actually set the eyelets into the center back edges of my corset. This has been one of my best investments this year. I have been using it so much. Whenever I do a corset, I find that I always reach for this thing now. So I'm going to link it down below. I got mine on Amazon and it wasn't too expensive. It comes with all of the eyelets in gold and in silver. So definitely worth the coin. All 
the eyelets are in and they're looking really really beautiful the last thing i need to do is to connect and finish up the modesty panel this i have cut out in the same ankara fabric and i have fused one side with interfacing which is essentially a type of material that has glue on one side and it helps to give your piece structure and stability i'm going to be sewing around three of the corners leaving one corner open for me to turn this thing inside out that way i have beautifully finished edges and i know that this is going to keep my back nice and covered on the inside of the corset once i'm done stitching around the corners that i want to be closed i'm going to trim down the corners and then turn the piece inside out like i'm doing here and like i did for the open edge of the corset i'm actually going to be going in to fold in the edges by about a centimeter or roughly half an inch place some pins there in place and i'm going to be using an edge stitch to close up that open end of my modesty panel after stitching this in place i gave it a nice press and because of that interfacing in there it actually feels really nice and stiff and it would hold its shape when it's on the inside of the corset this you can tack down to the back of your corset or you can just have it as a free piece now that the corset is out of the way, let's work on the skirt. The skirt I'm actually going to be cutting straight onto fabric. I'm not a fan of cutting straight onto fabric because once you cut, you have cut, there's no turning back. But I've layered my fabric in such a way that I'm going to be cutting three pieces of skirt at the same time. And the way I'm going to be figuring out the waistline is using my favorite formula for finding the radius of a circle where C is your waist measurement. Mine is 28.5. If you factor that into the formula, I ended up with a radius of 4.5 so from one corner i'm going to be marking a 4.5 now i wanted to include my waist allowance so i'm going to be marking four inches like so this i'm going to be marking in a circular shape and then i'm going to connect it together to become the waistline of my skirt now you would notice one side is folded the other side isn't what i did here was i cut three pieces of this skirt and then i'm going to be drawing in a side seam so it's not a full circle skirt per se i, I would say it's like almost uh, a quarter a one quarter skirt in terms of how wide it is my fabric is not wide enough to do a full on circle so i'm cutting three of these pieces i'm going to join them together gather in the excess on the waist and fit that into a waistband at this point i'm just marking my skirt length mine was 45 inches and then i'm going in here to draw in the side seam the aim is to have an even length on the side seam on the center front edge and on the middle that i'm going to be connecting together using my pattern master as you can see here if you have a fabric that's wide enough you can cut a full-on circle and you will need to do this multiple panels like i have done but i really had to hack this fabric and make a skirt that would fit around the waistline and the waistband of my piece Don't forget to add your seam allowance along the waistline, along the side seam, along the hem before you cut out your skirt. But I ended up with three pieces of that shape of the skirt. My prayer and hope is when I join everything together, I get some volume on the bottom. I also cut the lining using the same method. And I've also gone ahead to cut out a waistband that is six inches tall and the length is the same measurement as my waistline plus one inch for the zip allowance on the back. Now that we have all of the panels and pieces ready for the skirt, I'm going to go ahead to stitch everything together. The first thing I'm going to do is to just connect all of the panels of the skirt. I have three, so I'm going to be joining them along one edge and then leave one side open for the center back which is where my zip is going to be so i'm going to start off with this edge and once i'm done stitching that i'm going to grab the other side 
and join that in place so I have a full piece of my skirt ready to be fitted to the waistband. I'm going to be sewing these on a one centimeter seam allowance because that's how much seam allowance I gave on my fabric because I cut straight onto fabric up until the point that I finished the skirt I kept worrying that it was going to work that's why I'm not a fan of doing the freehand method my head is like if it doesn't work you've already cut you're already sewing you just have to pray that it actually all connects together once i was done joining all the skirt panels i am going in here to gather the waistline the good thing about cutting your skirt in this method is the skirt would be bigger anyways so you can really go in and gather the waistline into the waistband at this point i had fused the waistband with some interfacing to give it some hold and stiffness i folded it in half and i've ironed it in in place and with the waistline of my skirt gathered like I'm doing here I'm going to join the waistline of my skirt to the waistline of my waistband and then fit that on to see how it sits on my body halfway check on how everything is coming together this is what the skirt looks like I'm just holding it at the back but there's going to be a zip I'm actually glad I decided to do this project as a two-piece so it means I can wear this skirt with a yellow blouse, a black shirt, a purple blouse in the future and wear the corset separately. Um, the problem with ball gowns is there's not a lot of places you can wear a ball gown to so skirt is looking really lovely. I love the fullness of the bottom. I think with the under skirt I got from AliExpress uh, this would really be really really beautiful on like very full as well at all that volume oh yes in the same manner that i stitch together the panels of the main skirt i'm going to join the lining pieces together go ahead and gather the waistline and i'm going to be stitching the lining to the waistband seam like so i'm going to be doing this in such a way that i conceal that seam on the inside of my skirt and it's not visible even when you look inside of the skirt so i put right side together and i'm going to be stitching the lining to the waistband seam that connected the skirt in place once i have that stitched in place i'm just going to check that everything looks really good and so so far so good I am happy now I'm going to turn my piece like so and put right sides together and match the center back edges because it is time to fit the zip I got a black invisible zip because I want the zip to kind of be concealed in that center back seam and I'm going to be pinning the zip into the waistband and into the center back edges of the skirt and the lining kind of like sandwiching everything in place and on my machine i'm going to be stitching my zip into that center back edge of my piece i have a full-on tutorial showing how to actually properly stitch in an invisible zip because there's a method and a madness to how you're meant to unroll the zip so you stitch close as possible to the zip teeth so it looks invisible without you catching your fabric once i had both ends of the zip stitched in place i'm going in here to sew up the bottom edge of that center back seam that i had left open for me to finish up my zip and after doing that i'm going in here to overlock my center back edges on both sides as well as overlocking the hemline of the skirt catching both the anchor piece and the lining together and with that the project is done you guys are not ready you're not ready for this reveal because wow i can't believe i made this office in 14 hours like i clap for myself but i am ready we're heading off to the prom soon i've done my makeup or just shooting some content before we leave so i thought this would be the perfect time to show you my finished outfit i even did matching gloves because i'm that extra <laughs> Nobody has to be this extra, but I can't believe I'm going to prom! Oh my gosh! On a scale of 1 to 10, George, what would you rate my look? 12. Wait, not my words. George's. Okay, let me show you what everything looks like. So this is my outfit all done. I have paired it up with gold jewelry and a gold clutch. Guys, I am honestly obsessed with how the whole outfit came together adding that on the skirt let me show you this on the skirt from aliexpress was a very good idea because it held up the fullness of the skirt really well you can see because it's circular cut 
and the underskirt has some too it just made me look like a cake topper at this point and I'm not even mad because I've never been to prom and I just wanted to create something really fancy that I don't know what next I'll wear but I'm just obsessed with how it came out I have done matching gloves I have a separate tutorial for this if you haven't seen it already but how do we feel about this look oh I'm sorry I'm going to be swimming the whole night swirl 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 okay I will see you guys when I get there. I will show you any behind the scene moment, but I plan to have a good time. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Rate this dress one over 10 because we need to, we need to vote to see how you guys actually feel about this project. But I am off to prom. And off we went to the venue. We had to take an Uber because my dress was just too big to get on public transport. So we just enjoyed the ride to East London. We arrived there on time got lots of content it was just so nice to be in a room filled with women who had all made their outfits we we're talking about fabrics and trims and how long it took us to make our project and it was interesting to just hear why people made their pieces how long it took them it was just so beautiful to be part of i had an amazing time getting to know new people connecting with people who are already new and Fun surprise is they had this competition for the best look of the night and guess what? an amazing time working on this project i'm glad i took the challenge on myself and i am looking forward to creating more styles that are more out there more playful more fairy tale like but if you enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up rate the project or rate this look a one over 10 in the comment section down below and until next time have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye We just came home. Nobody talks about the aftermath of wearing corset pieces, but ah, oh, the release! Oh my god! <laughs> Can you breathe again? I can breathe again. <laughs> <laughs>